a topic is that is diabetes is causally related to the cancer so one of the very common thing that we used to see even in our clinical practice that in our opd's patients are coming with cancers of various sites they also have commonly have diabetes if you see that even uh, every day in gorakhpur data we had or uh, not yet matured but nearly our 34% of patients has diabetes mellitus or some kind of metabolic syndrome so though evidences are uh, can kindly change the slide so though evidences are not yet completely matured that whether diabetes is particularly causing some cancers or it is uh, related to some site specific cancers but if you see that there are certain cancer like pancreatic cancer and liver cancer there is clear cut association between the diabetes and the cancer of the sites uh, if we go by the epidemiological studies then yeah, there is right. many studies like uh, uh, patel's jejuna patel studies or eposte study the where we find that the hepatocellular carcinomas colorectal carcinomas over have increased risk with metabolic syndromes and nearly 81% risk uh, increase of hepatocellular carcinoma is uh, can you please change the slide so there is uh, associated risk with the diabetes and cancers and if you see the mortality wise the diabetes uh, cancer is causing second uh, biggest cause of the death and this particularly for the true for developed countries and with the diabetes is causing 12th uh, most common cause of death in our country the problem with uh, we don't have proper cancer registries and neither we have knowing exact incidence of diabetes too so we can't say particularly data for india what is true but cancer and diagnose uh, diabetes we are diagnosing in the same individual those who have some common risk factor so uh, uh, please change this slide too so there is a one uh, discussion that whether the relationship between the diabetes and cancer is actually there or there is the common factors that is causing both disease they are contributing to this and there is there is any anti diabetic treatment that is having any influence on the risk of cancer uh, please change this slide so as you know there are uh, change this too there is some uh, relationships between the metabolic syndrome and cancer those are common factor like you see with the increasing age now we are having more and more people are uh, going to be uh, more than 70s or 80s years and the age is one of the biggest factor where our cellular proliferation uh, and cellular mechanics get changed so with that we have more risk of the cancer in these patients then there are certain genetic factor familial history of hobc and even the same genetic familial histories are in the diabetes too then obesity is a common factor the physical inactivity unhealthy diet excessive alcohol consumption or smoking or endocrine disruptive exposure the circadian rhythm disturbance and air pollution so all of these you find that these are not something a uh, completely dissociated with each other so these can may contributory factor for each other but what are the biological evidences or what are the common mechanisms that can pinpoint particularly few organ we can pinpoint like obviously pancreas is secreting insulin the insulin is going by the portal veins to the liver so these areas are more exposed to the hyperinsulinemia hyperinsulin status but there are certain organs like the breast or colorectal where these activity are also uh, increasing the incidence of breast cancer and colorectal cancer is also increasing in diabetic patient too the mechanism of these is not 100% uh, correctly we can explain by the why this has happened and if you see there uh, please change this slide these modifiable factor beyond that the three common factor that uh, in diabetes patient we may uh, think that they are causing uh, cancer like the hyperinsulinemia one hyperglycemic state and chronic inflammation the cytokine release and then one other is insulin receptor or insulin growth factor uh, excess so what happens uh, please change this side too uh, so what happens basically if you see that cancer is a kind of nexus a vicious circle between type 2 diabetes cancer and obesity so there is uh, with obesity we all know that the obesity increases your inflammatory markers so that is il6 or tnf alpha all these are increasing and their constant inflammation is like one of the condition uh, that is conducive for development of cancer so in the organ where there is less chances of high, uh, higher insulin receptor status we may explain that this may happening due to the pathway of the uh, your inflammatory cytokines or means inflammatory pathway so this for breast cancers liver cancers and skin cancers or uh, these are more common than this then there is a leptin increase causes the activation of other oncogenic tumor factors and this again increasing the cellular proliferation causing your breast cancer 
and uh, ovary and prostate cancer the prostate is somewhere there is a controversial issue ki whether it is obesity is only increasing the risk of prostate because it has seen that diabetes has somewhere the protective in kind of prostate cancer diabetes has lens incidences of uh, prostate cancer and then reduction of hyponectin your inhibit the proliferation pathways and so renal cell carcinoma breast cancer and endometrial cancer risk increases uh, change this slide please so now the questions come that uh, only these factors are actually uh, increasing the risk of malignancy or patient ka kya question just a minute please ek bar ot dekh kya so or these uh, factors are just coincidental so if you see that in your practice what you will find more commonly that your patient which are coming with diabetes they are most commonly obese one so in cancer patient whatever we are particularly finding colorectal cancer or breast cancer or endometrial cancer there is 1.5 to 2 uh, times of relative risk increment in case of malignancy for these organs so somewhere uh, obesity particularly whatever we have uh, concluded that diabetes is obviously increasing certain risk factor in liver and pancreatic cancers or colorectal cancer but in other organs it may be the common factor that is associated with unhealthy lifestyles or other modifiable factors that are contributing more to the malignancy than directly uh, going to be a biological changes in that and it changes and then other factors comes in case of the diabetes uh, treatment also so this is the basic things that you know the, how the cancer you know how the cancer uh, develops there is obviously certain non modifiable genetic factors in the body that uh, all people will know the nursing double hit theory that there are certain mutation uh, engraved in our cells then the gradually we have more exposure to the environmental factor or the more it, uh, mutations come by the exogenous factor whether it is diet your drugs your mutations or anything and this cell goes to into the damaged state and non normally what happened the normal cell cycle you go for the apoptosis but in the cancer cells the decrease of apoptosis is going to causing you uncontrolled cell division and the mass formation and neoplasia so this overall state of higher proliferation is somewhere contributing back to the diabetes also and particularly the role of uh, please change this slide role of insulin like growth factors comes here and that igf increment or decrease in igf binding proteins may increase the risk of cancer because they somewhere dysregulating the cellular mechanism and this hyperinsulinemia causes the mitogenic effect as well as this is the you are increasing the protein synthesis and the decreasing the cellular death overall goes for the increased cellular proliferation so if you see that these are the common uh, anti diabetic therapies uh, which is that we commonly use the thiazolidine diones and metformin uh, had certain roles that uh, decrease the risk of malignancy and then there is a insulin there is some questionability about insulin and insulin analog that whether they increase the risk of cancer or not though the debate is not yet settled but certain evidence that metformin is more favorable for cancer especially to decreasing the risk of cancer whether insulin may increase the risk of uh, cancer due to again the causing the more hyperinsulinemic state uh, please change this one so what happened with the metformins that you know the one of the protein synthesis pathways that is mtor pathway and by the lkb1 amk and p53 the direct effect is that in metformin is decreasing the mtor pathway and so it is when depressing the mtor pathway it is depressing the protein synthesis and in decreasing the cell growth and multiplication and decrease the cancer uh, cancer growth another effect come obviously it is uh, decreasing the insulin level so insulin and glucose decrease and inflammation settles the patient's obesity uh, corrected and then again this causes a low inflammatory status low uh, hypoinsulinemia state decrease the cancer growth uh, please change this slide please change So bladder cancers that it was found with the pyoglitazone used uh, when they treated with the pyoglitazone there was no bladder cancer into ninety eight percent and whether not treated with the pyoglitazone it was ninety eight point two percent so though it was uh, statistically significant but there was no clinical significance found in there so yet that rule is not established we are not using pyoglitazone as a protective agent in the case of bladder cancer but metformin some studies have started using uh, for a protective agent even particularly in colorectal cancer the data has done the study that data yet has to be published so when uh, we are trying to focus on how the biological evidence by uh, cell lines we can go 
So you can see that insulin or insulin glargine is again they are basic mechanism is same. It is causing hyperinsulinemia, increasing the proliferative stage. And that proliferative stage is going to change into the your cancer stage. Up till now, insulin glargine has some evidences. Rest other insulins, we don't have any particular evidence about that they increase the risk of cancer. Uh, Maima, can you please change it? So now the question comes that what are as a particularly uh, practitioners we should think about uh, whether we have to change, choose a wisely our anti diabetic therapy according to the risk of cancers or we have to figure out that whether there is selective cohort of patients where we should avoid the particular OHA agent certain organs obviously liver diabetic uh, uh, cancers have some kind of connect uh, connection with the type 2 diabetes and particularly there is a reversal causal effect is also seen that if it is two years normally we have found that sometimes the diabetes precede the pancreatic cancers and the patients within a two year of developing diabetes cancer uh, diabetes they uh, get the pancreatic cancers and particularly in type 2 diabetes onset when it is occurring into the adult age group people this may be a, a caution for us that if a patient is suddenly developing a diabetes and there is certain other signs and symptoms, then we should uh, evaluate with the CT scan, particularly to look after the pancreatic uh, parenchymal status. But if it is a more than five years, then normally it has not seen any kind of particular association. But then there is a thought that it is actually diabetes that may secondary develop the pancreas, pancreatic cancer. So uh, uh, please change this. Overall, if we can say there is not a still very, very uh, strong evidences uh, for changing any kind of therapy or there is no very strong evidence that we can say uh, that diabetes is particularly cancer is associated with diabetes. Uh, obviously, in liver and uh, in pancreas is there, but not in other cases. One thing that uh, we want to, I want to say that whether your patient is coming in your OPDs of what age group, particularly females are coming. We should, uh, we are mostly, particularly diabetic practitioners are focused on taking the only consideration for diabetes or deranged glucose, but give, get a brief history about some other sign and symptom of cancer too. Your patient are, in, if they are not properly screened every day life in our India, the screening is not it. Just simple ask few questions about the slump the lady may have may have she has the bleeding per vaginal or postcoital bleeding. These simple questions may give you a kind of insight that those patients who are increased risk of liver, pancreas, endometrium, colorectal cancer, you can screen on the basic level. So, and there is no issue, there is a situation between the di uh, diabetes and some cancer and they are partially due to the shared risk factor. So, epidemiological supports, whatever are there, they are not yet mature that we can 100% figure out that. But aging, obesity, diet, uh, diet and physical in a very common contributive factor for both of them. And health, uh, we have to promote our patient for the healthful diet, physical activity, weight management that all you people are doing in your diabetic reversal programs also. And that is the both risks. So decreasing the obesity is going to actually protective effect for the cancer too. There is a very limited evidence that metformin is decreasing the uh, cancer risk or exogenous insulin is associated with increased cancer risk. So particularly for choosing any therapy, if there is a very, very high risk factor, only then you may have some cautious approach. Otherwise, the first priority should be given to the, your blood glucose control. And cancer risk is not uh, in diabetes. It is almost the, what is the average patient for the same age group that they have same risk factors. So only the motivation that you can give your diabetic patient to that not to much worry about the cancer. They have to be more motivated for healthy lifestyle and more go for your cancer screening programs. Females for 45 or above age group, if they have any family history of cancer, then screening should be started from the last member at whatever age they have diagnosed less than 10 years before that. Thank you.